So this lure has now had its uh, actually the third coat of epoxy and now this layer is protected the blue and the black is protected so I can I can do stuff on top of that so if I wanted to paint on top of that didn't like it I could wipe it off um, so I, I'm really in good shape and the next thing I want to do is I want to make some gills so what I've done is I've gone back to Microsoft Word I took a picture of this lure and I copied in the picture I, I cut it uh, I cropped it with uh, Microsoft Paint and I made several copies just to make sure I had the what I thought was the the best fit scale wise and then I copied this uh, this picture and I flipped it over so now I have both sides so just to make sure that I had a good fit I I cut it out and I'm saying to myself wow that, that's pretty good that's pretty darn good so what I would do is I'm gonna put the uh, the gills on here uh, tape this down take my airbrush paint them take it off boom so how do I do that I went back to Word and my gills are going to be have three parts to them all slightly different curves so what I did is I used the insert tool to put in ellipses and I stretched them to where I thought uh, they should be and then what I'll do and I'll, I'll show you that in just a second is I'll show you out of this kind of mess what actually is going to be the gill so here I've outlined the actual gill in green I hope you can see that now this red line if you're wondering what that is that comes from the original lure the 11 inch lure so what I did is I took that measurement Multiple, multiplied 14 over 11 and that's where the gill and the end of the gill so this curve will end there this next little curve will go up and then we'll go around so it's a little bit fancier gill but uh, I thought um, while I've got your attention uh, you might uh, want to see uh, a gill that takes perhaps a little bit more effort and of course any other easier gills that you might want to do of course will be um, hopefully simpler than this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this drawing and I'm going to cut this out because eventually what I want to do is I want to take, I'm going to cut this whole thing out, tape it and then spray it with my uh, airbrush to get a nice black gill. So I've taped the, uh, the picture of the lure with the ellipses onto three other pieces of paper and then I put that onto a hard surface Right now it's on a cloth, but I put it on a hard surface like a table. And what I did is I cut down the center of the line to, to mark the center of the, uh, of the gill. I did that on this one and on this one. So now my next step is I'm going to take the, the tape off and I got a very fine set of uh, scissors and I'm going to, to make that, I'm going to widen the gap on those cuts and make it look like the gill that I want. So this is a fairly big lure. So I'm thinking, I don't want a huge gill, but I want uh, something that's uh, visible. So uh, I'll get back to you after I've, I've cut it off so you can see it. I've taped the uh, outline on there and I've got a little bit of black in my airbrush and I go real light at first. We'll buy a bit of drying, a little bit more on.
And a little bit more. So here's what the gill looks like after it's done. It looks pretty darn nice. And we're going to do the other side now. Same procedure. I think those girls look pretty slick. So you'll notice on this mackerel, this side fin is relatively in the center. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do on this lure. A lot of times the side fins are actually down here, but I'm not sure if this is a painting or an actual picture. I suspect because of the detail it is a picture, so the location of this fin is fairly accurate. So what I've done is I've made a pin design out of uh, light cardboard and I also have a little piece of cardboard here. It happens to be the same curve as the top of the pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it down a little bit and then I'm going to spray with my harder Steinbeck very, very fine air, airbrush. I'm going to spray along this edge and then I'm going to move it. I'm going to spray it again. And this, as I do it all the way to the bottom, will simulate veins, very much like the picture. And uh, at the end of the day, it's going to look like a pretty, pretty good fin. up a little template this is this curve is the same as this curve up top here and I want to spray against that edge and that's what happens you create what looks to be a vein I like to do it twice just to get a little bit darker. And then I like to turn it around and uh, do this upper edge. That'll give you a well, a nice definition of where the fin is. So I also will do a little bit of spray in here as well. Uh, in a fin there's usually a, a fair bit of muscle so I'm gonna
Okay, let's take that off and have a look. Ah, that's not so bad. I'll try it. Do the inside. So we are getting ready to um, put the uh, black marks on the back. Um, this uh, this particular mackerel is uh, rather random. Uh, I've seen other uh, mackerel that were mm, the stripes were perhaps a little bit more organized. So because this lure is is a big lure, I'm I'm choosing to be a little bit more organized. So what I mean by that is um, I've I've added some tape to this lure. Bear in mind also that the gill and the uh, side fin is paint that is unprotected. So you don't want to be putting a glob of black paint on there and because that, that can actually ruin those things. So you have to be quite careful. So what I've done is I've added some guidelines for me. So this top piece of masking tape is kind of a no paint zone. And on, on this side, and on this side, I have, I've, I've added three quarter inch marks. Now why three quarter? Eh, to me it, it looked about right. So my intention is to take some black paint and you should understand that when you're using a brush for these, you do not bend the brush. And, and the, the rationale is, you're going to have the brush in the paint and then you're going to allow the, the paint to drain out of the brush. So really what you're going to do is you're going to make a contact with the tip of the brush and it's going to drain out and you can go back for some more paint and uh, do some more and it's going to uh, drain out again. And, and what that does, it gives you a relatively thick coat which is opaque because you don't want the blue showing through and hopefully it controls the amount of paint that you're putting on. Now, uh, my first black mark is kind of going to go like this. So it's, it's uh, the, the mark is here and the mark is here so there's a bit of a, uh, a curve to it. So the nice part about this is because I'm painting on epoxy right now, I'm going to be using this trim clad uh, high gloss paint and uh, what what often happens is when you start out you're not quite sure about how you want them to look and you might do one you might do two and you go oh I don't like those okay so you can take those off with a, with a little bit of thinner it comes right off so this trim clad is uh, is a great paint and we're going to start in right now because I've mixed this paint and we are pretty much good to go so my intention is to paint a few stripes and then uh, I'll get back to you a little later with a few more that are done and then we'll do one side and show you progress. It's always exciting when you're when you're putting on oil-based paint onto a lure. So you can see I've completed uh, the one side. I kind of like the stripes. They're not maybe as perfect as the drawing, but uh, uh, they have a, a theme to them, kind of uh, going from the back forward. Um, I put in some additional stripes here because I thought the three quarters of an inch seemed to be a little bit too uh, wide apart. So uh, I just put some additional stripes in the middle. I think the density is about right. So 
see how they go over the tail there. Now I get to uh, put this away to dry for a full day. Notice that the tape that had gone over the gills and the side fins didn't take any paint off. So that's, uh, that's good. That paint is on there fairly well. You might even have a hard time taking it off with your thumbnail. I've tried on a practice one and it was very difficult. As a matter of fact, uh, only alcohol will uh, remove that paint right now. So, okay, so we're gonna let it dry and then uh, I'll come back and do the other side. So here's the final product. You can see the, uh, the stripes on the back, the side fin, the gills, and of course that beautiful shiny mirror coating. Not sure if you can see the little tiny bit of uh, sparkle that I put on the tails. I like to do that on all my lures because uh, when this thing is doing this and there's a sun out, boy, it's just gonna sparkle. So notice the, uh, the beautiful bill here. You can't even tell that that is two pieces. You can see a little bit of a line here, but that's uh, not, not a lot to, to look at. This is a beautiful bill. The, the minor problem, of course, is that it's got bubbles in it. And that's a learning lesson for me now that uh, I shouldn't be uh, putting these bills together at colder temperatures because I have some of my other lures that don't have a tiny bit of bubbling, but not near as much as this. This is still very strong. It, it, it's welded together. It's not just glued. It's actually fused together. So, um, Here's the other side. The, uh, the journey that we've been on making this lure has been, uh, has taken several weeks. And surprisingly enough, this lure is not ready to go yet. It has some final things that have to happen. And before I would uh, use this, take this out on the boat after Wahoo, I will have to test it in the, in, in the freshwater lakes right near my home. So um, I, would, I would never put this on a plane or give it to a friend without the testing. I have other lures that uh, will work 95% of the, t the time. Minor tuning uh, and boom, it, they, they just run absolutely straight. This guy uses hydraulics to, to get it down and what I have to do is I have to take this, this loop here and when I'm dragging it behind the boat, if it, if it pulls to the right, I bend this to the left. And the same, same contrary, if it pulls to the left, I have to pull it to the right. So um, this, this tuning is absolutely necessary. I have never seen one of my lures with this uh, diving bill on that swam perfectly the first time. Now, when, you, when you're in a factory setting and, and the center line is, uh, is you know, plus or minus the thou, yeah, you can get them to work the first time, but I don't have that kind of precision in my shop. But anyway, I wanted to thank everybody for following me to the completion of this lure. I have um, another video about comparing different mirror coatings, and I look forward to you having a look at that, and that'll be ready here very quickly as well. Thanks again. Bye now.